too much coffee today. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's been a, kind of an interesting morning. Oh, Elizabeth is here. Okay, so uh, Elizabeth sent me a text this morning at around 8.25 that she's dog-sitting, and somehow a bird got into the room where she is, and it was trapped with her. So she was running late, and she's responsible for doing all the electronics this morning, so we were scrambling. But you're here. We're glad to see you, Elizabeth. Give her a round of applause for getting here. getting bird tracked and all, so. All right, well, we're glad you're here this morning for the 909, and uh, as we enter Thanksgiving week, and hopefully lots of friends and families and opportunities to get, to get, get together and give Thanksgiving this week will be on your plate as well. So before we get started, let us go to the Lord and pray. Sadie's gonna help me. Almighty and merciful God, you are such a gracious God. You guide us and lead us through so much in our lives. So, Lord, this week as we prepare to enjoy Thanksgiving, so much to be thankful for, and I'm sure there are many trials in our lives as well that we struggle with, but let us always return to you and give thanks to you for life and breath and just this opportunity to worship you this morning. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen. All right, let us all rise and sing. Our first song is Put Your Hand in the Hand. Lee, Charles, Layla, take us away. So put your hand in the hand of the man who steal the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look into the holy book, I want to tremble. Then I read about the part where the carpenter cleared the temple. For the buyers and the sellers were no different than the fellows you and I profess to be. And it causes me shame to know I'm not the man that I should be. So put your hand in the hand of the man to steal the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calls the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can Putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Mama taught me how to pray before I reach the age of seven. And when, when I'm down on my knees, when I'm close to heaven, Daddy lived his life with two kids and a wife, and he did what he could do. And he showed me enough of what it takes to get you through. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steal the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calm the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. I put your hand. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, what took joy o'er my soul like the sea billows rose in. 
Jesus came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. And the tall clouds of doubt, now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Blood so joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy, as onward I go. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Words of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Thank you, Dan. Let's give them a round of applause for getting us started this morning. We are always grateful for our band. We're down one today, though, so, but you guys are picking up the slack real well. We appreciate that. All right, folks, now is a time, uh, a special time in our service is where we can bring our concerns and our thanksgivings to the cross. So if you haven't had a chance already, it looks like some of you had. There's some paper on the back of that uh, credenza back there, and you can put a prayer request on there, and the church is going to pray over them, and then they will burn them after they have completed that prayer. So the band's going to play us some quiet music, and whether you choose to bring something to the cross physically, it's also a great time to do it spiritually with God from where you sit. I know we are so grateful to have the cross, just not as a symbol of the church, but it has power because Jesus died on that cross so that we can go to God through him. And so as we pray this morning, let us reflect on that of the power of salvation through Christ. And I know we all get to enjoy it. Heavenly Father, for many, this will be a tough week. Maybe they have lost loved ones in the past year that will not be at that Thanksgiving table. Some may not be able to travel. There may be brokenness in our family. Lord, I pray that this would be a time of healing, that our hearts and our minds would turn to you, because you are the only hope that we truly have. We truly have hope in you. So Lord, I just ask for your blessing upon these prayers and these thanksgivings, and these concerns, and whatever they may be that each person laid upon this cross this morning, that you would bless it and bless them. It's in the precious name of Jesus I pray. Amen. And now if we could all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father.
Amen. Thank you. Now's the time where we're going to look at some anniversaries and birthdays and joys, but we'll start with anniversaries. Ken and Coral Wheeler, they're, they're back living in Highlands. Exciting to see their name up there. I don't know if they're here today or not, but happy anniversary. If you're online listening to us, happy anniversary. Tom and Katrina Graham, and now some birthdays. Do we have anybody here this morning that's up there? I don't see any of the folks, but happy birthday if you're listening online or if anybody else has a birthday and you're not up there, happy birthday. Any birthdays out there this week? Because Lee loves to sing happy birthday to you. Sometimes he does it three times in one service, so all right, well. Okay, any joys out there this morning? Well, let's do two more pictures. Got some pictures. Greg Clarkson. Wow. That's pretty cool. What is that, Greg? Wow, it's beautiful. Those birds of prey are amazing. You see them flying around. Okay. Do you have a wildlife camera, or do you sit out there and just wait for these awesome pictures? Okay. <laughs> a patient man. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for sharing those with us. All right. Any joys or any visitors you want to say hello? Randy? So, so I'm going to uh, call on uh, Julie Jarrett to share with us a little bit about the Christmas parade and the needs of the Christmas parade. So, Julie? As you know, the parade, we've always participated with the animals. Just hold it close. Uh, okay. Um, but we're not able to get them this year, um, which is a shame. But we still want to participate. And right now, I have one shepherd and one king, and that's not going to do it. I need uh, volunteers. I need Mary and Joseph. I need two more kings. I'd like another shepherd. And we also need uh, someone to carry the banner. It's kind of heavy, so we need either older youth, or this year we're going to go for younger adults, whichever we can get. Um, my email address is in the bulletin, and I'll be in the back here if any of you would like to participate, and I sure hope you will. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, oh, got one right here. I am thrilled to have Omar here. He's at Raven Gap and with their uh, fabulous soccer team and my granddaughter from Hong Kong, so I'm thrilled. Well, when, when she says fabulous, she's not kidding. These guys are state champions, so congratulations. You were runner-up last year, and then you decided to go ahead and close the deal on state champions. That's quite a feat. Nice work. Okay, any other joys out there? Yes. A year ago, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, and I just want to say thank you to the Lord and to all of you for your prayers, because I'm on 100% healed. Amen. Thank you. Oh. Uh, just wanted to say, you know, we have a son at Boone. He's our youngest of three, and uh, he's been real sick all week with 100 to 103 de degree temperature getting worse and he just gotten his COVID, COVID vaccine and we thought it was just the second vaccine gives you some side effects so we just weren't really worried um, but it was getting worse so he he went and got medical attention and um, they thank goodness uh, diagnosed him correctly the first time with Rocky Mountain spotted fever which can be very deadly um, but he was diagnosed the first time, first time by a nurse as he was walking out the door. The doctor said, we just can't figure out what's wrong. We've done all these tests. And the nurse, the nurse said, let's just check this. And thank the Lord he did. Uh, thank the Lord that he's getting better. And um, just like I said, it's a blessing he was diagnosed correctly. Wow, thank you for sharing, Gwen. That is a blessing. That's scary. Okay. No, Joyce Lee? I, I mean, I sensed it for a second. Okay, no. We're just happy to be here. All right, yeah. Well, we're glad you're here. Okay. Any other joys out there? Anybody want to share? All right. Uh, now it's time to offer gifts to God. If I could get a few people to come help me pass the bowls, that would be great.
Hi. <laughs> Kenny, I thought you were doing a second round over there. I didn't know. So, okay. <laughs> we appreciate that. All right. Let us give thanks for our offering this morning. Almighty and merciful God, you have blessed us all in so many different ways. We thank you for the financial gifts that you have blessed us with, and I'm grateful for the sharing and the return of those gifts so that we can build up your kingdom and continue to perpetuate your church in a way that is pleasing to you. So, Lord, I ask your blessing upon these gifts this morning and help us to be good stewards, not just with these gifts, but with all the gifts that you bestow us with. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Randy, there's a line in here. I guess it just didn't get deleted. Are we doing? We're just ready to sing, I guess. Okay. All right, let us all stand, and what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to care. may be seated. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty. The Word of God for the people of God. Randy? Oh, 
in the person of Jesus, we have the uh, incarnation of the Alpha and the Omega. Elizabeth, if I can get you to bring me down just a tad, please. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. If you have a red letter Bible and you were looking at this uh, text, you would see those words in red spoken by Jesus. A little later on, uh, when you get to the end of the book of Revelation in the 21st chapter, we hear those same words being spoken from the throne. And in that case, the words are not read, spoken by God. So when we hear these words, uh, an inquiring mind, if they were to put those two together, might ask the question, so who are we talking about, Jesus or God? Well, the theological answer to that is yes. <laughs> In our Trinitarian theology, we're able to speak about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To speak of one person really speaks of all. In his book, uh, in Praise of the Useless Life, a monk's memoir, Paul Keenon, who spent nearly six decades at the Abbey of Gethsemane uh, Monastery in Kentucky, where I've spent this past week, writes about the relationship uh, between the persons within the Holy Trinity. From the perspective of Greek theology, there's a word called a perochoresis. It means a circle dance. I like that. At the monastery, uh, during their seven services of prayer, the ongoing refrain at the close of each psalm is an immersion into the mystery of the Holy Trinity. They sing this little refrain. Praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The God who is and was and is to come at the end of the ages. I sung that many times this week with the monks. It's a tune that keeps dancing through my mind. We've come on this Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, in our national calendar and in our family rhythms, and we have gathered for worship on the Sunday that for the church, in the liturgical worship rhythm of the church, is Christ the King Sunday. Now, even with the concerns that are still part of this global pandemic we've been dealing with for so many years. What, what have we been dealing with this for 10 years now? It seems like it's gone on and on forever and ever. And, and we're all just so tired and we're ready for it to be completely gone and not part of our conversation at all. But we know we're not quite there yet. But even with the concerns around holidays and the winter, we, uh, for many of us, perhaps your Thanksgiving plans this week will, be, uh, a, will feel a little freer maybe than, than last year in 2020, of course. Uh, but whatever your plans are for this Thanksgiving week, I, I do hope that all of us will approach this time with a real sense of gratitude and thanksgiving. Uh, this week's important to us because it does help us to be a little more intentional about that which we should be doing all along, right? Giving thanks. We have so many things for which we can give thanks, so many things for which we can name, uh, so many blessings uh, to name. And so hopefully this week, whatever our Thanksgiving plans might be, I hope that you're all safe and that all goes well and that you're able to uh, to be with, uh, with your families. I appreciated Jerry's prayer so much, just acknowledging that this week we'll have some challenges too. There'll be some empty chairs at tables and uh, Thanksgiving celebrations still perhaps won't look quite like you want them to look uh, for a lot of folks. But we have much to be thankful for and we try to this week uh, to be very mindful of that. And, and from our Christian perspective as we think about that, we recognize that the foundation for our blessings, indeed the very fountain of our blessings, is Jesus Christ. On Christ the King Sunday, it's a good time for us to bear witness to that and just to affirm and reaffirm that truth. God in the flesh, the Word made flesh to dwell among us, the embodiment of the God who will one day ultimately come and make His home among mortals in the new heaven and the new earth, which Revelation speaks to later on in the book. When we want to understand the nature of God, when we want to know who God is through our Christian faith, we simply point to Jesus. Here, this is who God is. We want to learn about God, we point to Jesus. Today, we celebrate the God who will ultimately reign over all the earth, over all the kingdoms of the earth. In his greeting to the seven churches in Asia, John writes of Jesus, calling him the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kingdoms, the kings of the earth. 
John bears witness that Jesus is the one who loves us and freed us from our sins by His blood and made us to be a kingdom priest serving His God and Father. One of the things I really enjoy about my retreats at the monastery is dipping my toe lightly into the prayer rhythm of the monks for a few days. They have seven services a day, beginning at 3.15 in the morning with vigils. I did that one time, and I found out it wasn't a great spiritual experience for me, so I don't do that again. I don't even set my clock for that one anymore. I didn't realize it until that day a few years ago when I went to the 315 vigil that it's the longest service of all their prayer services. Instead of the normal 15 minutes or so, it's an hour long. And I thought, well, thank you, God, for that experience. I don't know that I will do that one again. But I, I do try to attend several of them, and <clears throat> their last one in the day is called the Compline. It's at 730 at night. They methodically uh, work through the book of Psalms. They do several Psalms in each of those prayer services. And when they finish the book of Psalms, they, they start over. Their daily lives are, are filled with, with work and rest and prayer and the Psalms. And, and though we don't have that kind of rhythm, obviously we don't live in a monastery. I certainly don't feel called to the monastic life. There is a, there is a liturgical rhythm in the life of the church. Today, Christ the King Sunday brings another liturgical worship year to a close. Next week, we begin a new church calendar, a new church year in our worship life. It's the first Sunday of Advent next week. We'll have the Advent wreath here. We'll, have, we'll light an Advent candle. We'll think about our need to be prepared for uh, the coming of the Lord. We'll think first about His second Advent, His second coming, and then we'll think about getting ready for His birth throughout uh, the month of December as we move forward. And this Sunday, Christ the King Sunday, which brings another, again, Christian cycle, another worship cycle to a close, it's like putting a large exclamation point on the church year as we give voice to our faith in Christ, Christ the King of all creation. Now, of course, it doesn't really look like that now. It doesn't always look like that in the world, of course. It doesn't always look like that in the church. It doesn't always look like that in our families. It doesn't always look like that in our hearts. But Christ the King Sunday, I think, is a good time for us to, again, pivot our attention, pivot our praise toward Christ, to the God who is revealed in human flesh, and to engage in also in some degree of reorientation of our own lives, a time to sort of assess and to place our lives over against Christ and see those places in our lives where our witness is deficient where we could use a little more prayer and use a little more faithfulness, where we try to more fully move our lives in the direction of responding to the fullness of humanity that we have learned in Jesus. I titled the sermon this morning, The Alpha and Omega. And you don't have to be a Greek scholar to know that's the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. In the 21st chapter of Revelation, we hear the voice from the throne saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Later in this first chapter, we hear Jesus say, I am the first and the last. I came back from Kentucky a little bit early uh, to prepare for a family funeral uh, Saturday in Thomasville, North Carolina. And during the service of death and resurrection, I read, as I have often read before, these words from the United Methodist Book of Worship. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. On this Christ the King Sunday, we worship. We bask in the mystery of our triune God who has been revealed to us in human flesh. We offer our praise to God who has come in the flesh and who now abides with us in the Spirit. We come and we give thanks to the God who has been made known to us in Christ. And also, we come and give thanks for all the many ways God continues to be made known to us through human flesh. I very much appreciated the words of Father Carlos who was the guest master at the uh, Abbey. He gave two retreat talks for us retreatants on Monday and Tuesday after supper. On Monday, he talked about how our Christian faith is a mediated faith, how our faith is experienced through one another. And I've, I've thought of that over the years, 
I, when, he, uh, when he said those words, I, I said a silent amen to that. You know, one of the things that I really appreciate about our Catholic sisters and brothers is their appreciation of the holiness of God. If you walk into a Catholic space for worship, you just know you've walked into a different space. Uh, whether it's the holy water or the incense or, or all those kinds of things that really just give you a sense you've walked into something that's, that's really founded on something different than just the, the regular world around us. I've always appreciated that, and I've always thought that we, Protestants, I named myself in that, of course, I always thought we could learn something from our Catholic sisters and brothers. But it's also important for us to recognize that the experience of God that we might have in worship as beautiful and as valuable and as desired and yearned for as it is, we can continue to experience God, God far beyond those things that we do when we gather corporately. Our belief in Christ as the beginning and ending of our faith, our belief in worship, our belief in service, our belief in living out our lives of discipleship grounded in Christ. I like the way the preacher of Hebrews puts it. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Our faith begins and ends in Christ. And our faith in Christ is strengthened when we are blessed by the presence of those individuals who mirror the attributes of God that have been revealed to us through Christ. As we give thanks this week for all the many things for which we can give thanks, maybe we can add to that list the people who have crossed our paths, who have been Christ-like for us. Those people who have revealed to us the nature of God through their faithful life of Christian discipleship. I think as we give thanks to God this week, maybe it would be good for all of us to give thanks for all those children of God who have lived and continue to live their faith among us in ways that encourage us and strengthen us, in ways that mirror Christ's love for us. You know, I suspect you could name people who have lived and died in your presence, people whose witness continues to inspire you and continues to encourage you, those stories that continue to bound around in your mind, stories that may be funny or stories that may bear faithful witness simply to what it means to be a Christian in this world. My hope and my prayer simply for us today is that we will live in such a way that Christ can be revealed in us. Wouldn't it be great to know that at the end of our day, someone could remember our lives and be encouraged and inspired and strengthened and be reminded of God's love and presence with us and among us. I had a really nice week at the Abbey of Gethsemane in Kentucky this past week. It's been part of my annual uh, spiritual rhythm for a number of years. I'm grateful for the time away. I'm grateful for the time of silence, uh, grateful for the time of prayer, uh, for the opportunity to pray with the monks, for the time of hiking around their expansive acreage, reading and writing. Uh, part of my goal for this time uh, was to try to put together a book of poems that I've been working on for a number of years. Uh, several folks have encouraged me over the years to put them in book form, and so I've started collecting them a few years ago. And I've got, I don't know, 270 or so that I've written over the years, and I'm trying to, to cut it down to a manageable 75 or so. And so uh, if you've ever created anything, right, whether it's a poem or a piece of artwork or something you've written, it can feel a little bit like your child. And so it's kind of hard to, even though I know some, uh, I would identify some as maybe not as good as others, uh, not that saying any of them are good, but but it's hard to call your kids, right? And so I'm, I'm kind of was in the process of doing that this week. And I did, I ran across actually a poem that I had written for Christ the King Sunday. It didn't make the cut, just so you know. But since it's Christ the King Sunday, I thought I would call upon that once more and share it with you as I come to a close of, of my time with you this morning. A prayer for Christ the King Sunday. O Christ, our King, to whom praise is due, we lift the voice of our lives to you. Through summer's heat and winter's cold, Lord, make our witness pure and bold. Redeemer, sustainer, healer, and friend, your faithful love is without end. Dependent forever upon your grace, we yearn to gaze upon your face. So teach us again, Lord, what it must mean for us to proclaim you truly as King. Forgive every sin that has caused us to stray. Pull down every idol we've placed in your way. 
Draw us to worship as only you can. Grant us the wisdom to understand. And with our whole hearts, this day we will sing to praise and exalt you, Lord Jesus, our King. Praise the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The God who is, who was, and is to come at the end of the ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join us as our band leads us in victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his glory, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again. And caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. Victory in Jesus. So each week when I lead, I, I really pray to the Lord that he gives me something that I can share, something powerful. And Friday night, uh, we watched this movie, and you may have seen it. You may remember the story. It's called Breakthrough, and it's about a young man that dropped into the ice, and they pulled him from the ice, and he was basically, his heart stopped beating for almost 45 minutes. And miraculously, they brought him back to life. God brought him back to life. And he survived with no long-term damage. It was an amazing story of faith, of the mother. And, you know, you, you watch a movie, it's not the most polished Hollywood movie, but it just struck me that sometimes we cut Jesus short. We cut the power of God short. And, and Jesus tells us, you know, if you have faith in me, you can move mountains. So I'm not sure what the mountain is in your life, but I pray this week that whatever it is, that 
you put your faith in Jesus and you get that victory. So may you be blessed. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And Lee, Charles, Layla, fly us away.